Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Impact Investing Show. I'm your host, Samuel Aikanwin and Kimwin, and it's a great pleasure to be with you guys again on the show. Hope you guys are ready for tonight's show. We've got a lot of interesting things to speak about. One specific Facebook post, which I saw this week and thought, you know what, this was too interesting to pass on in terms of sharing with you guys. We've also got an audio message that has been sent in in terms of a question and side by side with that as usual we are going to be opening up the telephone lines and also aside from all of that we're additionally going to be making available the opportunity for you guys to chat in the comments on youtube in order for you to let us know what your specific property questions are so first and foremost let me welcome you to the show it's a great pleasure to have you guys on every single viewer is of value to us so feel free to hit the like button to let us know let the youtube world know additionally that you are getting value from this content and side by side with that if you are not part of our community if you haven't hit subscribe ever before on the impact properties london youtube channel why don't you hit that subscribe and side by side with that press the bell notification so you can be kept up to date with all of the information and every single video that we drop as and when we drop those videos guys first and foremost let me just share with you it's been an interesting week as it pertains to property there's a lot of things going on we're not going to go into the nitty-gritty of all of the things that have been going on we've been doing that week in week out what we want to do today on episode 26 yes i said it episode 26 280 something subscribers later we actually just want to give you more value by focusing on the questions on tonight's show so i'm really looking forward to tonight's show really looking forward to adding value to you guys strategizing with you guys looking into some of the situations and dilemmas that you guys are going through and side by side with that if you haven't um, engaged with one of our master classes or one of our webinars feel free to register the link is in the description of this video uh, monday coming which will be the 12th of october we have a master class going on which will help you move forward in your property journey by giving you some of the secrets that we've been using to take advantage in this current climate so be a part of that and get the full value now to, before we get into tonight's show i want to share our disclaimer that is just that all information provided and results given are exemplary each person's results may vary or differ results are based on consistent strategies and we advise that you always seek legal and financial advice from a qualified professional so now that the red tape is over what i want you guys to do if you have any property questions feel free to just start loading them straight into the chat into the comments and we'll be happy to get through them as and when as we go through tonight's show so if you've been on the show before ever before i'd love you to just put inside of the live chat being here before being here before if you are brand new if this is your first time engaging with us on the impact show what i would really appreciate you doing is just writing in the chat brand new let us welcome you let us help you know that this is a community for people like yourself people like ourselves who want to move forward in our property journey so we don't have to do it alone we do it together i don't know if you've heard the quote but john maxwell has a law one of his uh, 21 indisputable laws of leadership and one of his laws is the law of significance and what he basically breaks down is the number one is not a big enough number in order for it to be significant and what that law basically explains is that you need to work with other people and that's the reason we started doing this show a number of months ago when the lockdown was first originally announced what basically happened is i had a number of coaching clients people that i help and support in their property journey reach out to me and say look samuel i need your help what should i do about this what should i do about that what should i do about the fact that i've got tenants vacating without sh sending notice or sharing notice etc etc and unfortunately i wasn't able to help every single one of those people off the back of phone calls text messages and whatsapps so what i basically did is i said to the team look how can we find a way that we can actually support these people on a regular basis week in week out month in month out but without it being something too onerous and taking too much of our time because we've got our own property activity to focus on additionally as well and basically what that turned into is this specific show it actually turned into the impact show where we decided to make ourselves available on a regular basis which ended up being on a weekly basis answering questions for people who want to move forward in their property journey so if that's you if you've got questions if you've been here before or if you're someone who's brand new and you're just starting out whether it's in your property journey or just with engaging with us at the impact show be a part of our community hit the subscribe and let's move forward together all right we've got antonio philip in the comments 
Great to see you, Antonio. Uh, been here before. Excellent. Great to see you back again. We've also got Yogesh who's in the comments. He said, sorry, um, he can stay for the whole show. We'll watch it later. Yogesh. I believe Yogesh is probably trying to say he can't stay for the whole show. That's cool, Yogesh. As you know, as most of you may not know if you're brand new, but Yogesh should know because Yogesh has been coming again and again to the show. We've also got a voice message from Yogesh for tonight's show. But um, basically, these shows can be watched on replay because the benefit of YouTube is the fact that not only do we deliver this show live so we can answer your questions live and make sure we're helping you move forward in a live setting but side by side with that additionally the replay is recorded so that allows you to be able to engage with this content after the fact of it being live and side by side with that not only engage with the content but also share this content with your friends your family your followers those people that are side by side helping you in your property journey as well so again a great big welcome to every single person now what i want us to do is i want us to jump straight in to some of the stuff that i've seen lately. first and foremost i want to start with the facebook post that i recently received which i thought was absolutely fantastic thank you also kimwin we've got also kimwin in the comments um great to see you again sir thanks for another great session most welcome this is what we do and this is how we want to help the community to move forward so yeah without further ado i'm going to jump into the straight piece uh the first piece of content um straight into it and it's interesting we got a facebook post um or i saw a facebook post i came across this facebook post um and i think part of the reason that really drew me to the facebook post is that this facebook post was actually written by somebody who i know but side by side of that someone who's been on the impact show who's watched the show before sent in questions via chat etc and i saw this specific post i read the post i thought it was quite interesting um, and i thought you know what i want to share it with the community and i want to talk a little bit about it the focus of tonight's show episode 26 effectively is all around focus and again you know that doesn't limit the questions you're going to send in if you've got questions if you want to phone in feel free to do so and we'll definitely go through that but i just saw this and i thought to myself you know what more people need to see this more people need to understand what this is really about more people need to get a, a flavor of this because this is the reality of how many people think and not only think but how many people are challenged in their property journey because of a direct byproduct of exactly what we're going to be speaking about so as a result i'm going to be sharing this with you guys for you guys to get an idea of the post but not only the post kind of what i thought about the post in terms of you know moving forward um etc for most people in their property journey and hopefully you guys will see this and you will have an idea of whether this has been um something that's affected you on your property journey i'm sure it probably has been um but again you know it's all about getting to that place where i can show you guys you know the kind of things that are affecting people in their property journey how they're affecting people in their property journey um and you can utilize that to move forward in your property journey so without further ado the team should be able to have it up now excellent there you go we've got the tech working today all right so basically i'm just going to read this out to you guys so you can see exactly what was posted this was posted by shalina pert shalina is a property investor with her husband um raymond um that they have a couple i've got to engage with over the last couple of months a bit more and the funniest thing with shalina and raymond which i really admire is their property business is a family property business so they get everyone involved they get their children involved etc etc and um shalina is someone who like i said i've been connecting with speaking with um, talking about property and, uh, and amongst other things as well so i saw this post uh, a few days ago it says four days old now so it's four days ago it says deal stacking is definitely more of a science okay and she puts the little science uh, emoji she says done an art she goes on to say there is no room for creative writing when it comes to running your numbers she has been uh, she has to be honest there have been occasions when she has fallen in love with an opportunity and she believes deep in her gut that it will all work out at the end really Shalina girl you better sit down and it goes on and on and on and the funniest thing is it was really I think maybe the gif uh, the animation that really got me so you can see this young guy here um with his actor but this actor's there with his calculator and in the video he's just you know going through it he's, he's scratching his head going through it and you can see the caption on the meme it says her trying to make a deal stack and it's funny because when i saw this i thought to myself you know that shouldn't be anybody like nobody should be in that space and i i wrote a, a comment 
on Shalina's post. I basically said, you know, what made you think about this? What got you to that place where you felt that you needed to share this with the community? And Shalina said something interesting. She says, you know what, she always has certain random thoughts um, like that about her property journey and she generally shares them on Instagram. So yeah, you know, certainly that's a plug, guys. Um, go follow Shalina. I know M7 Properties are not only on Instagram, they're also on YouTube. She has YouTube videos as well. Um, so again, go connect with Shalina. Give her some encouragement. Let her know that you, you know, heard about her on the Impact Show and you thought, you know what, you'd encourage her on her property journey too. Now, coming back to the point, you know, I saw this post, I read this post and following reading the post, I thought to myself, you know what, this isn't how property people should be thinking about property. Like property people shouldn't be in that space where they're challenged because for some reason they're, they're actually thinking, if I use this term emotionally, now I'm using this term loosely okay and i want to take some of the sound bites from what shalina's post actually said because i think they're really really important things to think about throughout my journey in property i've been there okay i've been there i've done that I, i've met so many other people investors wannabe investors coming up investors you know early stage investors who've also been there and who've also done the same thing they've got emotional about an opportunity i'll give an example okay you might have a rent to rent opportunity come to you you've looked at the numbers very you know very loosely but because it's your first deal and i've had so many people like that because it's their first deal OK, they're emotionally attached. They emotionally think, no, I can make it work. I will make it work. I can see how it could work. OK, now, look, this is the reality. A real deal. OK, a real deal. Most of the time, it's obvious in terms of how it's going to work. The challenge is whether you see how it's going to work and most other people can't see how it's going to work. So I'll give you I'll give you a clear example. So you see exactly what I'm talking about. Nine times out of ten, I was in a WhatsApp conversation today, which is which feeds right into this example. In this WhatsApp conversation I was in earlier on today, a gentleman said to me, oh, are you still looking for deals? And I said to him, I'm always looking for great deals. And then I explained to him that most WhatsApp groups, most Facebook groups, most groups where people talk about finding great deals... They're not actually finding great deals. They're not even finding really mediocre deals, okay? They're finding below par deals, okay? So they're deals that are not really any good for anybody. But what generally tends to happen is you have a bunch of people in those groups who are early stage investors or who are trying to get their first deal. So as a direct byproduct, what happens is they can't scrutinize the deals to the degree to basically say in the group, look, this is an absolutely rubbish deal this is not worth my time it's probably not even worth your time as a property sourcing agent there's really no point you actually even sharing this deal with the community now that place to get to that place takes experience it takes time sometimes it takes um quite a few lemons if i put it that way i.e taking on deals which aren't that good and finding out they're not that good and when you find out that they're not that good then saying to yourself i'm never going to do that Again, and I'm sure, you know, if there's investors who are in the actual comments, you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. We always get to that place where we realize, you know what, this is one of those, I'm sure I'll never do that again moments. And this is one of the things I just wanted to share with you guys on tonight's show. I wanted us to start tonight's show understanding how to circumvent this idea, how to circumvent, how to get out of the space where people are emotional let's use that term i don't want to but let's use that term where people are emotional about the transaction where people are more about oh this is my first deal or more about oh i can see how it's going to work i can make money here etc 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 now the way you do this is two things you need two things in order to get out of the emotion of investment the first thing is you need an investment threshold OK, and this is something I don't hear enough people in the property space or in any space talking about. So, for example, if you're going to invest in stocks, if you're going to invest on the on the Forex market, if you're going to put your money in the bank, if you're going to invest in property, you should have generally an investment threshold. OK, so when I say an investment threshold, what am I talking about? An investment threshold, very simply, OK, very simply, an investment threshold is where you know at which percentage you will or you will not invest a certain amount of money okay so i'll say it again an investment threshold is when you know that at a certain percentage of a return on investment you will or you will not invest in a particular project or endeavor now just to make this simple if your investment threshold for 
HMO properties. So properties you're gonna buy, refurbish and rent out on a multiple room basis is a 15% return on investment. What that means is if you put a hundred thousand pounds into that project, you're expecting by the end of a 12 month period to have recuperated 15,000 pounds, okay? So if you have a 15% return on investment threshold, okay, inside of your HMO acquisition uh, process, what that basically means is when you look at a deal and someone tells you this is gonna be 15% return on investment, you will give it a little bit more time. You'll go and scrutinize it for yourself. If you then scrutinize it for yourself and you see, oh, this is a 12.7% return on investment, you would say, thanks for the information, but this isn't for me. And if you wanna go further, you might explain why it's not for you. You might make it really clear, look, it's not for me because it's actually only a 12.7% return on investment and I only focus on 15% or above. Now, if somebody brings you an opportunity from the from the go, from the jump, and they say, hey, Samuel, I've got this pr property opportunity for you, or hey, Antonio, I've got this property opportunity for you, or hey, Yogesh, I've got this property opportunity for you, and you say, okay, what's the return on investment, the expected return on investment, and they say, oh, it's a 12.7% return on investment, then what that means is, for me, I'm probably not even going to look at that opportunity, because it's just a waste of of my time to look at the opportunity on the merits of the 12.7% return on investment when I know my investment threshold is a specific number. So let's say 15%, which is above 12.7. So the point I'm making is the first thing you need is an investment threshold. You need a number or a percentage. You need a, a fixed figure where you know if things are below that, I don't waste my time. If they're meeting that, then I'll look at it. If they're above that, then I'll look at it, okay? And then when you look at it and you do your own due diligence, which is key, obviously you have to do your own due diligence or we'd recommend, let me use that terminology, we'd recommend that you use your own due diligence. But if you look at it and the deal looks like it starts to make sense, it looks like, you know what, this could work for me. Then in that predicament, what you should then do in order to move forward is take a, take, you know, take hold of the deal, take a, take a heads up on the deal. Now, let me go back to the point I was making before about how you can really find deals a lot of the time. A lot of the time, people may bring you mediocre deals, okay? And the deal is mediocre because they're looking at the deal from the face value. They look at the deal and they say to themselves, okay, you can put a tenant inside to rent the property and a single let tenant is gonna pay you 750 pounds a month in this particular area. And your mortgage and all your liabilities are gonna be free 400 pounds a month, your building insurance, etc. So you're gonna walk away with a 400, 450 pound a month profit. So let's just say that's a deal on the surface. We're not really gonna go into how much you put in and all of that stuff to work out the ROI. We're just talking about how to find a great deal inside of a mediocre deal so you might look at this deal and again look this is a resource i created some time ago which helps you with this stuff so this is called 30 ways in 30 days okay this resource 30 ways in 30 days was created to help people look at multiple ways to generate revenue using property that's exactly what it says on the tin okay so 30 ways in 30 days we look at 30 different strategies in this resource and it says multiple ways to generate revenue using property so the objective of that resource is to share with you an expansive amount of ways that you can generate revenue using property now why did we create that resource this is why it's very simple because when someone comes to you with a deal which they think is a six percent yield eight percent yield a house generating 750 a month in that area where your liability is 300 a month and a circle for 450 pound a month profit for you you can look at that deal with this kind of a lens and say you know what there's not just one way to make this happen there are multiple ways to make this happen and looking on the merit of this deal with this multiple way lens if we put it that way you might be able to see, okay, this single let property, which you're saying could generate £750 um, per month, could actually work better as a house of multiple occupation, as a HMO. And if we actually utilise and construct this property as a HMO, yes, we're going to put in an extra £40,000 up front, but we're going to now be generating way more than £450 per month pre-tax profit. What we might be able to do is get a six bedroom multi-let where each person's paying 400 pounds a month and you can do the math yourself. Six times 400 equals 2,400 a month. And at that 2,400 a month, you might have liabilities each month 
of around seven, eight hundred, let's even call it nine hundred pounds, maybe even a thousand pounds. So now you can do the maths yourself. We've taken a property that somebody has said, look, Samuel, this is going to generate seven hundred fifty pounds a month. We've now looked at that property, seen a different angle which we can utilize on that property, i.e. let's actually put a bit more money inside. Let's carve that up. Let's turn it into a six bed HMO. Now, as a six bed multi let, we can generate 2,400 a month. Yes, our outgoings monthly probably goes up because now we're paying bills, et cetera, et cetera. But now our outlay is 1,000 a month instead of the 300 a month as a single let. But although our outlay has more than doubled, our income has more than tripled. So whereas previously we might have been generating 400 pounds a month, now if you times that by three, four, eight, 12, we're now generating 1,400 a month because that 2,400 minus the 1,000 we've got on monthly expenses leaves a pre-tax profit of circa 1,400 pounds a month, which is more than triple the profit. So we're, we're just over doubling the expense on the monthly, but we're over tripling the potential profit. OK, so the first thing, like I was saying a moment ago, the first thing you need is an investment threshold. OK, the first thing you need is an investment threshold. The second thing you need, which is probably the most important thing, which is why I've left it to last. The second thing you need, if you really want to make sure you don't want to get too emotional about your property acquisition, about your property opportunities, is focus. It's a simple word. It's focus. You need focus. You need to know exactly what you're doing. You need to know exactly why you're doing it. You need to know exactly who you're doing it with. And you need to know how often you do it, when you do it. Okay. Do you only buy HMOs? Do you only buy HMOs and do rent to rent? What, what do you do? What are you doing? Okay. What's your strategy? If we put it that way. So the moment you know your strategy, let's say you're a rent to rent investor, a rent to rent property investor. So you do rent to rent. You know what you're doing. OK, who are you doing it with? Who's your power team? Again, this lends itself to another resource that we created some time ago. This is the Team 10 resource. OK, this resource was created. It shares here. Discover your property power team. This resource was created for people to understand who is their actual power team, who they need on their team. Who do you need around you to make sure that every time you go for a deal, you've got the right people in place to make things happen? OK. So discover your property power team, team 10, that resource was created to help people understand that exact same thing. So focus is key. First, what's your strategy? Again, 30 ways in 30 days effectively is a strategic resource. It's a strategic resource to give you insights into the different strategies. But then you need to know who you're doing it with. So that's where team 10 comes into play. OK, so you're a rent to rent investor. You need your power team. Who's on your power team? You might have a maintenance man. You might have an acquisitions agent. You might have different people, an estate agent you work with, etc. So you've got your power team. Okay. So what are you doing? Who are you doing it with? When do you do it? Okay. So the question is, how often are you attempting to acquire rent to rent properties in a 12 month period? Is it one a month? Okay. Do you do that once every month? And therefore, is your acquisition a monthly acquisition? Do you run monthly acquisition campaigns in order to get your new project every month okay so not only what are you doing not only who are you doing it with but how often do you do it when do you do it okay and obviously location 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 is the term that they always use where do you do it okay where are you active where are you operating are you a rent to rent investor who's based in london but you are running to deals in nottingham running to deals in chelmsford running to deals in Reading, run into deals across the country when really focus is what is needed. Okay, so this is the reason we asked that question. If you haven't already, hit the like button if you are getting value during this video. And side by side with that, if you haven't already become a part of our community, feel free to hit the subscribe so you can be a part of our community. You can get more content like this every single time we drop a video and make sure you press the bell notification so you can also be kept up to date. You'll be notified, okay, by YouTube when we are going live. So if you guys are getting value, let me know by putting in the comments value and let me know if we should open the phone line or if we should keep it shut. Uh, it's all up to you guys. This show is for you. And one of the things I want to do on today's show is episode 26, just to think like for 26 weeks back to back, we've been offering value. What I want you guys to do is help me, help me improve the impact show 
for you. Help me improve it for your friends. Help me improve it for your followers. Let, help me inf improve it for your family, okay? The people that you know, as well as yourself, that are interested in property, that want to move forward in property, okay? Help me improve this show for all of them, for all of you, for all of us, okay? Because we want to show that works. We want to show that helps you. We want to show that pushes you forward in your property journey. So let us know in the chat. Okay, if you're watching this live, you can let us know right now. If you're watching this on a replay, feel free to comment below the video. You can always write a comment on a YouTube video, whether it's live or whether it's a replay. So let us know in the comments, how can we improve the impact show for you? Okay, what can we do on this show so it adds even more value to you? Okay, we're, we're significantly interested. So don't think about your peer, think about yourself for a moment. Samuel's giving you the the, the rights and the opportunity to selfishly indulge for a short while and just think to yourself okay what could they do to improve this show for me what would make this show a better show for me week in week out all right so guys i leave that task with you and we will push forward um <laughs> so i've got a comment here open the phone lines please if you can bro and there is no need to if you can phone line is open so the phone line's there you can call in right now guys feel free to let us know if you've got any specific property questions and you want us to move forward with you in that okay we're here to help the community so the phone line is now open feel free to take full advantage grab the number also grab the access code and let us know guys let us know if you've got any comments that you want to share with us um, over the phone, we will be able, we'd, we'd be happy to help you guys move forward in your property journey. All right, so the phone line is open. Whilst we're allowing the phone line to just pick up any calls that are coming in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the audio that we got recently. Okay, that's powerful. That's powerful. That's powerful. Thank you for that, Antonio. Maybe have guests come on the show. I think that's actually a great idea. I think that is a extremely great idea, actually. Um, I like that. Okay. So, phone lines open, guys. Call in. Let us know if you have any problems and, and questions you need us to strategize through with you. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this audio so we can hear one of the questions that came in earlier on. Let me know in the chat if you can hear the audio or not and if you can't i will just reiterate what is being asked so let's go hi samuel thanks for answering my question um and i hope you're all well um it's about branding so i feel like i need to get a logo and some kind of branding so that people recognize um, what I'm about and it for to be kind of run across all the social media platforms and and I'm creating a website and just just some kind of um, branding I guess I need I'm not very used to um, doing anything like that but I just wonder if you've got any tips about simple things like designing a logo does it really matter what it looks like in the end um, does it matter what you um my property company is probably going to be called property a um does it matter if i don't have a meaning for a the letter a um i just would be nice and easy to remember um and then do i need a facebook page called property a uh do i need a linkedin profile called property a and and maybe in telegram as well um or can i brand myself and just brand yogesh in my name um so thank you very much but that's my question now how do i brand myself um you know just so that people um recognize me people trust me people are happy to work with me that's my aim really uh, i want to promote that now thank you powerful powerful stuff okay so guys let me know in the chat if you were able to hear yogesh is question but very simply, Yogesh is asking about branding. And I shared with you guys, tonight's focus of the show is the word focus. It is really just 
doubling down and making things happen. So Yogesh's question effectively, he was asking all around logos. He was asking all around other things connected to that and basically asking the question, look, what do I do in order to basically get people to trust me through means of my branding? He said he's probably going to have a company called Property A, etc, etc, etc. We got a, quite a few callers calling in. Um, um, excellent. Antonio said that they, he could hear him perfect. So we've got quite a few callers calling in. The team's telling me. So those of you who are phoning in, please hold on um, on hold until we get to your call. So, yeah. So basically, Yogesh was basically saying, what does he do around the area of branding? OK. And is it important in order for him to start to get people to trust him and work with him? And I'm going to say this and again. People might think that this is countercultural, but I'm just going to be very transparent and share my view. The first thing is this, what is branding? Okay, what is branding? And I'm going to tell you what branding is. Branding is how you make people feel. Okay, now you may not understand that, but that's just the reality. Branding is how do you make people feel? When you show up, how do people feel? When your business shows up, how do people feel? Do they feel you know, nice and fluffy when you guys show up, for example, okay, because these are the things that will start showing you what your brand should look like, kind of the colors you should be aiming for, etc, etc. Branding is all about how you make people feel, okay? Now, because of that, you know, you need to brand yourself according to who you actually are, the value you actually bring to the marketplace, because if you brand yourself outside of that value, the problem is you might deceive people for a while, but over time, what will generally tend to happen is your, your reputation will precede you, as they call it, yeah? So people will get to know who you actually are and people will start to share who you actually are. And then as a result, that will tarnish someone's brand. So this is why it's important when you think about branding to think about who are you? What, what unique skills do you bring to the marketplace? What are you offering people? How are you going to make people feel, okay? Marketing is very heavily connected with branding. And for me... Yogesh's question was a kind of a mixture of the two ideologies, one of marketing and one of branding. So like I said, branding for me is how you make people feel, but marketing is the messaging. The way I break it down to people simply is marketing is the story you tell people in order to make them feel how you want your brand to make them feel. So marketing and branding connect with each other very, very heavily. So Yogesh was asking questions like, you know, he, he's not used to doing things like your logos. Should he go and create logos and stuff like that? And listen, I'm going to be honest with you. If you are investing in property seriously, you're going to be worth a lot more than the $5, $50, $100 that you're going to pay on a website like Fiverr.com in order to get a logo done. So no, you shouldn't be spending your time getting a logo done. You shouldn't be spending your time, you know, doing all of this stuff. Now, good practice is to have the same social handles. So if you are going to have a website called propertya.com or propertya.co.uk, yes, you should go and get the Instagram property A. You should go and get the Facebook property A. You should go and get the LinkedIn property A. But the point I'm making is where's your focus? Okay, where's your focus? If your focus is on investing in property, and maybe like I do, using other people's money to invest in property, then the track record is going to speak for itself. And what you need to be able to do is find great deals, which is why we run our masterclasses every single week for people to learn how to find great deals, because that is the essential skill set. You need to find great deals. And the second thing is you need to be able to show a proven track record of what you do with those great deals in order for investors to come on board and work with you. So hopefully that helps you, Yogesh. I would say, remember what you're focused on and make your main focus your main focus so you can basically make sure you win in your journey. All right, so that was Yogesh's question. We are now gonna open up the phone lines. I think I've got caller number one who's on. Caller number one is number 6329. And if we unmute that, we should be able to have caller number one speaking now. Caller 6329, good evening. Okay, I believe. Hi, good evening. Yes, I can hear you. How are you doing, sir? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you for asking. So, just before we uh, let the YouTube world hear you, two questions. Are you happy for everyone on YouTube to hear 
the specific question you're going to be asking me. Excellent. And are you also happy for everyone on YouTube to hear what I'll be sharing with you as my kind of insights in terms of what I would do if I was in your shoes as well? Yes. Excellent. That's perfect. All right. So you are online. Let everyone know who you are. Sure. So hi, everyone. My name is Antonio. Okay. Um, I've recently started, um, well, this year, a business looking to do rent to rent HMOs. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Cool, powerful. So, Antonio, what's your question? So, um, I mean, we've had quite a few chats. We spent some time together. So, we looked at doing the uh, direct to landlord letter campaign, marketing campaign, and the lease campaign. Yep. Which I've made uh, some start on already with both. Um, but I also wanted to sort of take advantage of social media marketing. Um, and getting some insight into that, where to start, um, you know, which platforms are best, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, um, and yeah, just anything about that really. Powerful, powerful question. All right, brilliant stuff. So stay on the line. Um, first and foremost, great question. Thank you for asking it. And I think that your question is powerful because we're in a time and season where people need to tap into what you've just spoken about a lot more. And one of the biggest problems is, is uh, because a lot of people are not tech savvy or don't believe themselves to be tech savvy, they don't believe um, that basically they know what to do in order to get to that place where they can start doing that kind of marketing. So again, it's very, very powerful hearing you share exactly what you shared. So for those of you who maybe did not hear, um, I've got the admin saying that, could Antonio be turned up, please? Basically, Antonio asked a simple question. He said he's currently obviously connected with me several times in the past. He basically said that we've worked on direct uh, to landlord letter campaigns as well as leaflet campaigns. But he wanted to take this opportunity to basically ask questions about social media and digital marketing campaigns in order to see if that's another avenue he can get into. Um, excellent. So that was Antonio's question. Um, was that a good summary, Antonio? If you're still there. Hello? Yeah, I just asked, was that a good summary of your question? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ex excellent. All right. So just to jump in, like, first and foremost, like I said, I think you're asking a great question and it's a great time to be asking that question. I think the more people find it difficult to maneuver and to get out of their home, the more social media and online marketing is going to have a very, very big impact. Now, one of the things I'll say is, look, we're in 2020 and many people at the time of this recording believe that, you know, social media is at its peak. And I'm going to share with you that I do not think social media is at its peak at all. OK, I think as an example, the, the very quick emergence of an organization like TikTok how TikTok really took off in such a short period of time, for me, is an evidence of the fact that social media has not hit its peak. So I personally believe in the next four, five years, three, two years, we're going to see a lot more of social media platforms and how they basically start to dominate um, certain areas and arenas. Now, the reason I say that as a context or I say that as a foundation is because if someone like Antonio, if you're thinking about putting together social media marketing campaigns, you're thinking in the right space, in my opinion. So here's, here's just to answer your question. You know, do I, if, if I go for this question, do I think it's a good idea to engage online in order to find clients for um, rent to rent? The first answer is 100% yes. Um, in terms of what are the best ways to do that, in terms of platforms, which is, again, something Antonio was asking about, I think you need to start from your avatar. Now, some of you who are watching this may not have an idea of what an avatar is, but an avatar is your ideal client. It's a, it's a picture, an archetype of your ideal client. So let's say, for example, there was a time when I was doing rent to rent in our business. Our ideal client was based in Redbridge. They were generally, profession-wise, they were generally male, okay? They were generally an IT contractor or an IT consultant, that level of role or above, and they were generally making 50K plus a year. And they were the kind of person who had bought two or three, maybe usually two or more, but two or more properties for buy-to-let 
specifically HMO purposes in the Redbridge, Gants Hill, Ilford area. Okay, so that was my specific customer avatar for a landlord when I was dealing in that specific area a number of years ago. Now, the reason I share that with you is because most of you listening to that will be like, wow, Samuel, like, that's quite detailed about a landlord. And the reason why I have to be that detailed about the landlord is because if I don't know who I'm looking for, then it makes it harder for me to find them, okay? But if I know I'm looking for IT consultants, if I know I'm looking for people who are on a 50K plus salary a year, if I know I'm looking for men, if I know I'm looking for people who own two or more properties in a certain district geographically, what that does is radically shifts the landscape for me in order to start finding people like that. So what I can start doing is use platforms like Facebook and start running campaigns to people who fit that criteria. I can run a campaign, an advert campaign, only to men, only to men who are generating 50K plus in their employment. I can focus on men who are living in or who are around the Gantz Hill, um, Redbridge, Ilford area, et cetera, et cetera. So, what I would be saying to you, Antonio, is start with your customer avatar. Who are the landlords you're looking for? What kind of landlords are they? Where do they go? You know, the next question, which is a powerful question. Most people don't ask this question is the next question, which is a powerful question, which bear with me, guys. I think we've got some audio coming through. Yeah. So the next question, which is a powerful question, which I think a lot of people don't ask themselves is where do these people go online? So not only where do they go, but where are they online? Where do they live online? Because so many people don't ask that question. Like where, do, where does my ideal client actually live online? So these are things you need to start to think about, okay? Who am I looking for? Where are they? Where do they live online? How can I connect with them further, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where I would start for you, Antonio. I'd start in the space, Antonio, where you start asking yourself, where does my ideal client live online? And then straight after you find out where your ideal client lives online, I'll then move into a space of asking myself, if they live here online, how can I basically reach them? And again, obviously, one of the ways which is very obvious most people will be thinking about is through means of ads. So yes, you can run Facebook ads. You could run Instagram ads. The thing to, the, the most important thing is not the ads you run or how you run them. The most important thing is to understand who you're looking for. Who are you targeting? Because the reality, again, it's the same with when we're finding motivated sellers. If you do not know what a motivated seller looks like as a customer avatar, you can't find that person. And if you can't find that person, all your marketing efforts will be a hit and miss. But if you know exactly who you're looking for, you know roughly exactly where they frequent online or in real life, that helps you. So again, going back to leaflet campaigns, there was a time where we used to focus on betting shops. So we wanted our leaflets in betting shops. Why did we want our leaflets in betting shops? Because if you've got a leaflet which says, we buy your house quickly, and someone's in a betting shop gambling part of their life away, they may get into a space where they need that help. And as a result, because we know that's where our client is, that's where we want to put our marketing. So I'd say the exact same principles for good marketing operate online as the same as offline. Where does your ideal client frequent online? And then let's put some campaigns together in order to target them. So does that help, Antonio? Right. Yeah, that's very, very helpful. Excellent. Um, that was very good. Excellent. Um, Go for it. You got a follow. You sound like you've got another question. That's a great question. All right. So for those of you, if you're unable to hear Antonio, Antonio just said his follow up question is in terms of the creation of the ad, should he go somewhere like Fiverr.com in order to get someone to help him with that? Now, I'm going to say two things. One, I would not advise you to go to Fiverr for that. The reason why is for me, Fiverr, especially because of the price point, it's a great environment for content creation but not necessarily content conception, okay? And what most people don't understand is content cr creation is very different to content cr conception. Now, putting, a con putting content together, great content together, it, it takes a different mindset to asking someone to create a graphic or asking someone to create a video 
etc etc so to speak about myself for example i work closely with three different people in terms of marketing okay and each of these people bring a different thing to the table two of those people specifically help us with our facebook marketing campaigns whether that be adverts etc um and and all three of them help us with our artwork um you know our video our videography our stories that we're telling etc etc so i would say to you you know first and foremost reach out to me um send me a message on the walkie talkie system and i can kind of connect you hopefully with one of those people um obviously they charge but they do facebook marketing that's their thing so that would be a great first point of call i would say the second thing is if you're trying to do this on a budget so I'm, I'm aware that some of the people that are watching this whether live or whether on the replay might be you know bootstrapped so they're trying to say look how can I do this without spending any money I don't want to pay one of Samuel's social media people or one of Samuel's Facebook people how can I do it with with little or no money well what I'd say is jump on the platform that you believe your ideal client is on whether that be LinkedIn whether that be Facebook whether that be Instagram etc TikTok Snapchat blah 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 then when you're on that platform, you take note of the adverts that speak to you. You take note of the messaging that gets to you, okay? And then what I'd advise you to do is replicate that, okay? And this is something a lot of people don't do, and I, I would say they don't do it enough. Replicate great work, okay? If you see someone who's, who's got an advert talking about, you know, we can buy your house, in in 24 hours we can buy your house quickly or whatever it is whatever the jazz some people are saying out there is but if you see that messaging gets to you that messaging comes across to you or something about the imagery spoke to you or something about the picture they used caught your attention then what you want to do is you want to replicate that so that's the that's the bootstrapped approach that's for the 399 guys who are watching this on the replay or the live you know utilize other people's success in order to make yourself more successful so look at what adverts are speaking to you currently and then remake those adverts in your own style following your brand if you want to use that terminology with your messaging in order to speak um to your audience so that's what i'd say about that um they're the two things one reach out to me i can connect you with um, one of my facebook ads specialists or two basically go and look at the messaging that's actually speaking to you and ask yourself how can i replicate that messaging um, in order to move forward in my journey so i hope that helps antonio as well yeah that was very very helpful excellent um, and i think that's pretty much it from me excellent so thanks again i'll drop your message as well most welcome um, yeah most welcome great to have you on the show thanks for calling in appreciate you excellent so guys that was antonio um great question and a great follow-up question as well great to have antonio on the show and anyone else if you are calling in feel free to call in before we close the phone line um so you can basically get your property questions answered on tonight's show so we've had antonio's question just then what i want to do at this point is share with you guys our resource that we want to encourage you guys to go and grab as a result of today's show so for many of you guys you know you might be in a position where samuel's mentioned focus today and you're thinking to yourself yeah i want to focus i want to focus more but i don't necessarily know how to or i want to focus more but i don't know you know what to do what does focus look like for example so I'm going to encourage you guys to go and get this resource, okay? This specific resource is called The One Thing. This audio book, you can go and get it absolutely free. You're going to go and take a 30-day free trial of Audible. And if you go to that link, www.impactproperties.co.uk forward slash The One Thing, you'll be able to get a free copy of the audio book, The One Thing, and listen to the book. You know, the funniest thing, which is quite powerful, is if you decide to not keep that 30 day free trial of Audible and you cancel after day one, day two, day 29, you will still keep the book, the one thing, absolutely free. All right. So this is our free resource. It's a key resource. We want to put this in your hands. It's the one thing book. This is a powerful book. Okay. 
And I want to encourage you guys to go get that book. All right. This is a book that will help you start to focus more and not only focus more, but start to understand how important it is to focus. OK, and this is one of the lost arts in the property space right now and has been for quite a while. The fact that people just don't focus enough. OK, and the more you focus, the better you'll put yourself in a predicament and position in order to move forward in your property journey. Now, again, said it before, we'll say it again. If you're getting value on tonight's show, what I want you to do is hit the like button. If you haven't already hit subscribe, hit subscribe, be a part of what we're doing in our community. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you can stay up to date every single time we drop a video. Now, guys, let me tell you something really quickly before I move forward in the show. I was speaking to someone a couple of weeks back, okay? And I said to the person, you should jump on the live show. Okay, if you jump on the live show, you can ask us questions. We've got, we got an opportunity for you to call in, etc., etc. And the person said to me, oh, when's the live show coming on? I said, oh, it's every Saturday, 6 p.m. Okay, you can just jump on Saturday, 6 p.m. And then I said to them, did you subscribe to the channel when you watched the show the first time? And they were like, yeah, I subscribed. I was like, so if you subscribed, you should be getting the notifications, right? Surely you should get the notifications and know when the show's on so you can ask your questions. And the person said to me, Check this out. I want to say this because I want I want to make sure there's no one who's watching this now with a live or on the replay who's in this position. The person said to me, yes, I hit subscribe. But after hitting subscribe, I didn't hit the bell because I get too many notifications. OK, and that really got me. And the reason it got me is because notifications are there for a reason. OK, the reason you've got the notifications is so you can turn some notifications off and leave some notifications on. Now, again, I'm not saying you need to leave our notification on. Obviously, I'd like you to, but I'm just saying I want you to understand the bell notification is not there just for fun. It's not there just to say, look, I subscribed and I really subscribe. No, it's there to help you. So if you want to be notified of when people go live, all you've got to do is hit the bell notification. That's what you're doing. You're saying, I want to know when this person is going live so that I can be on the, on the stream. Or I want to know when this person drops a video so I can get the content. It's just that simple, guys. All right. So I want to help you guys move forward in your property journey. Thank you to all of those who have subscribed, who have been a part of our community. Thank you to all of those who hit the bell notification because you actually want to know when we go live. You want to you want to connect with us and engage with us. And like I said earlier on in the show, let us know in the comments, please, guys. All right. This is my request to you. These shows are free. We do not charge you to come and get this this value and get this content. So I would ask you to do something for us. And that simple thing is if you're watching this live, let us know at least one suggestion in the comments of what you think we could do to improve our show. OK, and if you're watching this on the replay, let us know in the comments below. Just write a comment. Just let us know in the comments one thing you think we could do to improve the impact show. We're here to improve, guys. We're not here to just keep doing the same old. We want to get better and better and better for you guys so we can help you guys to move forward in your property journey. So that's my story over, rant over. I'm going to quickly look in the comments, see if we've got any other questions. Okay, we've got a question from KTR. Hey, KTR, great to have you on the stream. Okay, KTR says, hi, Samuel, how do you evaluate if a buyer is serious to buy your deal to avoid wasting time? That is a fantastic question. All right. So, KTR, this is what I'm going to say to you about being able to do that. The first thing you want to do, okay, the first thing you want to do to make sure you know, okay, the first thing, not the second thing, not the third thing, not the fourth thing. The first thing you want to do to make sure that you are certain that someone's going to move forward with a deal with you is instruct a solicitor. OK, and the way you do that, you have to do that creatively so it makes sense and so it works. OK, but what you basically do is hopefully KTR, because I know I was coaching you some time in the past. Hopefully you got your power team in place. Hopefully you've got your power team in place. Now, with your power team, you should have one or two solicitors that you're working with. OK, so what you're going to do is you're going to 
go to the solicitor that you're not going to use to represent you okay or one of the solicitors you're you're not going to use to represent you in that transaction if you're selling the transaction yourself if you're si sitting in the middle like we teach on the master class then that's a little bit different because you can use any of the solicitors then but you're going to go to one of the solicitors in your power team and you're going to say to them i'm going to refer a client to you and i want you to ask that client to put money on file as soon as possible okay and then you're going to go to the buyer and you're going to say to the buyer Hey, Mr. Buyer, everything's in place for the deal. You're going to have to use one of my solicitors because I know that my solicitors or the solicitors, you're going to have to use one of the solicitors I'd recommend, one of the solicitors from the pool of solicitors I work with because I know they can transact in the speed that we need, especially in this current climate, et cetera, et cetera. And then after you basically make them aware of that, you should let them choose which solicitor out of the four, five, 10, 12 that you have to recommend to them. And then the moment they choose the solicitor, again, just like I've said, you're going to contact that solicitor. You're going to say, hey, Samuel, this particular client has opted to choose you as the solicitor to represent them on a transaction I'm doing with them. I'd like you to get them to basically get some funds on file as soon as possible so I know that they're serious and ready to go. OK, so let me say this to you. It's rare that you're going to find a buyer who's going to take on your solicitor and put money on file who's not going to push forward with what they say okay it's very rare it's not saying it can't happen but it's very rare okay now why is it rare this is why it's rare when a solicitor requests for a buyer to put money on file they might only ask for 500 pounds to depend on where they're based if they're based in london they might only ask for like 500 pounds to be put on file it's not a lot of money but listen to this and, and again, I, I want to say this because there's a lot of people out there teaching people our oh, property sourcing and all of this stuff who tell you, oh, take a reservation fee, take a reservation fee of a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds or a whole bunch of other stuff. OK, or take your fee first, take your fee before you sell them the deal. I don't believe in most of that jazz. The reason I don't believe in most of it is because I ask myself, would I give money to someone who's basically a stranger with no protection that I'm going to get that money back? OK, and the answer nine times out of 10 is no. OK, it's not always a no, but most of the time it's going to be no. Unless I'm giving them the money as here, here's a gift. I can't see myself giving 2,000, 3,000, 8,000 pounds to a property sourcer who I know from nowhere. So what I'd usually recommend is you recommend a solicitor, you encourage them to use one of your solicitors. The great thing about solicitors is anyone can go and check out those solicitors, see if those solicitors are credible, if they're worthy individuals and organizations. And straight after you've got them, the solicitor, you allow them to put money on file. Generally, that's going to be around £500, £600. But when they put money on file, they open up a case and that solicitor will basically start to take that person's details, documentation, passport, all of those, you know, anti-money laundering and, you know, appropriate things. So the, the great thing about that is the person is actually progressing with that solicitor. So if they then later on decide to actually go ahead with the deal, the great thing is they've got set up, they've already got the solicitor in place. If they choose not to go ahead with the deal, then obviously you've got to make them aware that that specific solicitor may not refund the money they place on file or they may not refund a certain proportion of that money now again obviously every solicitor is different so like we usually say in the disclaimer make sure you get the legal advice or you know the financial advice in this case the legal advice from the specific solicitor to find out how they operate but all of the solicitors that we operate with generally on a case-by-case -case basis some of them will return the money on file some of them will not return the money on file. And it's just important for you to know that, for you to also reiterate that to the specific client. So KTR, as usual, let us know in the chat, five stars, four stars, three stars, two stars, one star, no stars. How many stars do you give us for answering your question? Now, that was a great question, KTR. Thank you for asking. Um, I like it when I get people asking those questions, which are more in depth around the property journey because there's a lot of people teaching coaching property stuff which it, it, it doesn't really fly it's stuff that's not really ideal and it's stuff that doesn't really help people so it's really important when people have real challenges and real questions for those kind of questions to come up because those are the kind of questions that will help us to actually move forward in our property journey really and guys look i've shared it with you already i'll share it with you again just before we cut out for tonight's show if you haven't already been on our 
masterclass where we basically share with you how we take advantage in this current climate go to this link right below me that link is www.impactproperties.co.uk forward slash masterclass www.impactproperties dot co dot uk forward slash masterclass the next masterclass is on monday at 8 p.m and on that masterclass we're going to be sharing with you how we take advantage in this current climate in order to move forward in property so if you're a beginner if you're starting out go take full advantage or if you're someone who's more advanced again go take full advantage make sure you take in notes get your ipad your notepad and you know take full advantage of that so with that being said I am Samuel I Can Win. It's been a great pleasure to have been on the show with you all tonight. I look forward to seeing you move forward in your property journey. And without further ado, happy investing.